Hello class. In this unit, we will look at the concept of work, energy, and the conservation of energy. The most important concept we will cover in this unit is the law of conservation of energy. Now, energy is closely related to the concept of work, so let's start by looking at work. In physics, work has a very specific definition. Work means that energy is transferred. And this requires that these three conditions must be met. First, a force must be applied to an object, easy enough. Two, the object must undergo a displacement. There must be movement or displacement. And three, the force and displacement must not be perpendicular, otherwise the work is zero. Let's consider these examples then to test that. Is pushing against a wall work? Well, no, because there's no displacement. If there's no displacement, there's no work. Consider the weightlifter example to the right. Is lifting the barbell overhead work? There's a force applied. There's displacement. And they're not perpendicular. So the force is upward and the displacement is upward. So not perpendicular. Therefore, we have yes. Is holding the barbell overhead doing work on the barbell? If you think about the three criterion that we just applied, then this must be no, because there is no displacement. So isometric activities like pushing against a wall or holding something in place does not qualify as work. There's certainly effort, but it's not work. More specifically, the work done when a constant force is applied to an object while the object undergoes a displacement, delta D, is given by the following. Work equals F delta D cos phi, where phi is the angle here between the force vector and the displacement vector. So you'll notice I'm using a delta D for most of my notations. And you'll see in the book that they use another notation, an S vector. I'm also choosing to use phi because we'll often, in problems that involve an incline, there we have used theta traditionally. And so I'm going to use phi just to make it um, distinguish between that in problems where we have both angles. Let's dig a little deeper into that expression. Depending on the sign of cos phi, the work done in an object can be positive, meaning the force increases the speed of the object, like we have here on the left as in pushing a car, or negative in meaning that the force decreases the speed of the object, such as in slowing someone's fall. Let's take a quick concept check on that then. The work done by gravity during the descent of a projectile is what? Positive, negative, zero. Its sign depends on the direction of the y-axis or its sign depends on the direction of both the x and the y-axis. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about that. So if we think about the work done by gravity, let's think first about the force of gravity. We know that the force of gravity is acting downward, and the displacement is downward during a descent. And we know that the speed is increasing. This suggests that the work done by gravity is positive, because the speed is increasing. Alternatively, we can also look at the expression F equals, or work equals F delta D cos phi. The angle between these two vectors is zero. And the cos of phi then, for phi equal to zero, will be equal to a plus one. And so the work is an F delta D, where we have the force due to gravity in this case, all multiplied by a plus one. And so it's that cos phi that is giving the positive or negative. So this confirms that it would be a positive work. You might ask, where does this equation come from that we use for work? The equation arises from a particular vector multiplication called the scalar product. This is the product of one vector a with the component of a vector b along a. So that's this vector here b cos phi. It's the projection of this b vector onto an axis that is parallel to the a vector. 
In other words, we only multiply the parallel components of the vectors. And it doesn't matter if it is a dot b or b dot a. In other words, a b cos phi is the equivalent of a cos phi times b, and that's the equivalent of a times b cos phi. So it's either the projection of A onto B or the projection of B onto A. Down here, you'll see that this is A cos phi, and so we're looking at the projection of the A vector down onto an axis parallel to B. And those will give us an equivalent value. So work is just the scalar product of the force vector and the displacement vector. So we're multiplying parallel components of these two vectors to get f delta d cos phi. Let's look at the signs from a different perspective now. Suppose we're pulling a box horizontally with an applied force. The upward component does no work, but the horizontal component parallel to the displacement does positive work. This comes right out of the cos phi. For a phi that is less than 90 degrees, my cos phi will give me a positive value. In the second example where the box is moving still to the right, but the applied force is to the upper left, then phi is greater than 90 degrees. Hence, the cos phi will be negative. And this is consistent with our earlier description, namely, the horizontal force will be reducing the speed, which implies negative work. Lastly, a force does zero work when the force and the displacement are perpendicular. That came from our definition or our three criteria of work. And so when phi is equal to 90 degrees, the cos of phi will be equal to zero. And hence, we have zero work.